Hello, hello, hello. My name's Kyle Van Voris. I'm the CEO of Voris.com. And today, I'm gonna share with you a secret. Shh, make sure no one's around you. Put a little thing over your monitor so no one can see. Put headphones in. This is between you and I. Let's dive right in. All righty, now that it's just the two of us, I'm sharing with you a secret of leadership. This is a really, really important piece of leading teams and leading them well, okay? And that's the goal. There are a lot of bad leaders out there and I don't want you to be one of them. So today I'm gonna to share with you what I do or kind of how I think about leadership in order to really build a strong team. And one of my beliefs is that a strong team should really have a culture of open debate. And in order to facilitate that open debate, you need to have people with very diverse backgrounds, different experiences that all come together for a common cause. And as the leader, you're the glue that allows all of these people to interact in a meaningful way. And the two quick books that I like a lot on, um, on leadership, one is Radical Candor by Kim Scott and the other is Extreme Ownership by Jocko Wilnick. I'm not gonna go into both of those books and why I like both of them right now, but just quick throw outs because you're watching it, I figured. You know, add something to the reading list. All right, so let me jump into a doc that I put together and a little exercise that you should do in order to help illustrate this concept a little better. And if you like this kind of content, please like, comment, subscribe, let me know, so that way I can keep creating it. Okay, cool, let's jump right in. All righty, the secret of being an impactful leader. And um, we are gonna start up at the top. <laughs> we could start at the bottom, I guess, but I'm, I, you know, I like to start, start up top. Let's keep things normal. All right, I'm losing my mind. So what are we talking about here? Now, I wanna highlight this. this is from the book, How to Win Friends and Influence People. I think this is an important, um, kind of an important quote from Dale Carnegie. The only way on earth to influence other people is to talk about what they want and show them how to get it. And that's a core tenant of mine when I'm in a leadership capacity. My goal as a leader is to help you get what you want. Where do you wanna be in your career? I'm the person who's gonna help you get there. In order for me to do that, you have to trust me and trust that everything I tell you is in your best interest. That's really important. And guess what? It's gonna be in your best interest. That's the key. There's no lying here. If you are a leader, you should have your team's best interest at heart. Fair? Fair. Okay, so it all starts right here, which is knowing your reps and showing them that you are in their corner. So here's the exercise I want you to do, which is filling out a table like this. So just open up a, a spreadsheet, a, a Google uh, sheet or something, and you wanna put the rep's name, where they wanna be in their career, right? What are they trying to accomplish? What's their main goal? Then the second thing here is gonna be what they have to do in order to get there. So think critically here, like what does this person have to do in order to get there? And then what is holding them back? Okay, and these are pretty similar, but let me give you an example just to illustrate it. Uh, the rep's name is Kyle. Uh, where they want to be, they wanna be VP of sales, let's say. What they have to do to get there is they have to you know, hit certain KPIs, so it's very like, um, you know, very measurable, they have to hit certain KPIs. Um, <clears throat> they have to learn about uh, how to better be a better leader, things like that. And then what's holding them back? They're not educating themselves today. They're not hitting their numbers today. What are things that aren't there today that need to be there in order for them to have what they have to do to get there? Does that make sense? If not, comment, I'll clarify a little bit more. Uh, that's the idea, do it for each one of your reps. And then you'll have a better understanding of some of their motivators and what's holding them back, which will drive some of your conversations. Now, on this topic though, once you understand that, there are things you need to do in a team environment to help facilitate the relationship that you're building, but also the improvement that they're trying to make within their own career and them as a person. And the important thing here is everyone on your team must feel like they belong. And I have this um, little acronym that is PNC, praise, niche, and cross-pollination. These are the three things that I do consistently in team meetings, and I'm always trying to do these things in order to keep the team in good spirits, keep the energy high, and also make people feel like they uh, they belong, they're in a trusted environment, et cetera. So the top one is praise. So I compliment success in public in front of peers all the time. The only exception here, guys, is if the rep doesn't like being complimented in front, in front of other people. Very rare, I've only had that happen once, and then I 
purposely dialed this down. I did the praise more in private, but um, praising in front of people in front of the company is a really, really big deal and do it often. The other one is niche. So look, not everyone can be good at everything. And also not everyone is the same as your top performer, right? So I give people niches, specific things that they uniquely are talented at. So Let's think of an example. Let's say you're running a, a team of AEs and one person just closes everything, right? Well, not everyone can be the best closer on the team, but the best closer on the team typically gets the most attention. They look best on the dashboards, etc. Well, you have another rep who does pretty well. What you can do is look at her performance, let's say, and she is good at like asking uh, or doing trial closes, right? Throughout her demo, she does a lot of trial closes, which is a really strong best practice. And she's better at it than anyone else. I call her the trial close wizard. Like if you want to talk about trial closes, Hannah, get up. Why don't you walk us through how you use trial closes? I'm always pointing to Hannah. Hannah's the best at trial closes. That's her niche. That's what she's awesome at. And I always point people towards her when we are ever talking about trial closes. And you do this with all of your, your reps. They all have little niches that they uniquely are good at. And when other people need help, you can pull them in, which is great. But also it gives each one of them confidence. They feel like they're good at something. And what really causes a lot of problems is when people don't feel like they belong and they don't feel like they're good at anything in the job that they're doing. So I try to find niches and make sure I give people praise around their niches and also give them ownership of it, right? Someone needs to be trained on trial closes, Hannah, you know? Hey, Hannah, come over here. Why don't you walk, walk us through how you use trial closes? And finally, cross pollination. That's actually kind of led into that there. I have the reps reach out to others for answers, not just always going through me. This is key. Hannah's a trial close gal. Kevin's having trouble with trial closes. Go talk to Hannah. Hannah, can you work with Kevin and help him with trial closes and break down one of your calls and explain to him how you're doing it? And what that does is it makes every rep have to go to somebody for a specific thing that they're learning from. So everyone's learning from each other. So not one person feels better than the others, even if on paper, like performance wise, like dollars and cents, they are better. Everybody has a place, everybody belongs. And if you can do these three things really well and repetitively, you're gonna have a team that feels like they really belong in the environment you've created. And that is how you have lifelong success. And that's it, folks. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you found that helpful. Any leadership questions or anything like that, put them in the comments, I'll get to them. And if you like this type of content, let me know as well, and I'll keep making it. Alrighty, thanks so much, and we will talk soon. Woo!